this video, we are going to learn about compound interest. So many times in math class, you ask yourself, why do I need to learn this? This is an actual formula that is used by banks and by other companies to figure out interest and how much money you'll make and things like that. So you'd want to pay attention to this because this is something that you could use in your future when you're going to open up a bank account or um, when you're going to take out loans and things like that. So these are things that you want to pay attention to. Compound interest is an exponential formula. Exponential functions, these are the things that we've been talking about with our exponential growth and exponential decay and all of those things. This is the formula here. This formula is on your formula sheet, so it is not something that you need to memorize. You do need to know how to use it. So A, this letter right out here in front. Now notice how A is capital and P is capital. In math and in science, with any times you have formulas, it's important to keep the capitalizations when they occur. So A is capital, P is capital, R, N, and T are all lowercase. The reason for that is because lowercase a's and lowercase p's can mean other things. So you need to be specific with what you're doing. So this capital A represents the amount of money, principal plus interest, after a certain amount of time. So that is um, like your final amount. P, this number right here, this is your principal amount. So the amount of money that you invest. So the initial amount of money that you have. If you're going to open up a bank account, however much money you put in, however much money you deposit, that is your de principal amount. R represents your interest rate. And they always give you the interest rate as a percentage and you always need to convert it out of a percentage into its decimal form. And then T up here in the exponent, this represents the amount of time in years. And then we have N. N is the number of times that interest is compounded in one year. So if we say that interest is compounded annually, then N is one. If interest is compounded semi-annually, then N is two. If interest is compounded quarterly, then N is four. And if it is compounded monthly, then N is 12. Like I said earlier, you will always be given this formula, but you do need to memorize these because they will not tell you um, they'll tell you annually, semi-annually, quarterly, monthly, but they won't say one, two, four, 12 times. So you do need to memorize that part of it. So let's look at an example. It says Kelly plans to put the money that she has saved from babysitting her neighbors into a bank account that earns 4.5% interest compounded annually. She has saved $1,250. How much money will be in Kelly's bank account in four years? So let's identify what we know. We know that the bank account is 4.25% interest. That is our R value. It's going to be compounded annually. That gives us our N value. We saw up here that annually means one. So N is one. She has saved $1,250. That's the principal amount. That is how much money Kelly is putting into the bank. And then it says how much will be in Kelly's bank account in four years. So T is four. So we're gonna be solving for A. And again, that formula is at the top of your page. So we're gonna have a equals $1,250 times one plus. Now this part's very important. We cannot plug in a percentage into a formula. So we need to convert this out of a percentage. To do that, you take your percentage amount, 4.25, and you divide it by 100. 
Because remember, the word percent means per 100. So you always will divide by 100. And this will give us 0 0.0425. Divided by n, n is 1. And then this is being raised to the 1 times 4 power. Now I know this might look a little overwhelming. Maybe we're having a little bit of anxiety looking at this. But I'm going to show you how to do this in your calculator in one step. And it's going to be super easy. So do not stress out. I'm going to show you how to do this nice and easy. We're going to head on over to Desmos, my favorite calculator of all time. I'm here at Desmos. I do not want the graphing calculator. Instead, I'm going to go to Math Tools up here on the top left hand side, and I'm going to click on the Scientific Calculator. You can also get here by going to desmos.com slash scientific. That will take you here as well. And what I'm going to do is I am going to type in this part right here. So in my calculator, I'm going to have 1,250 parentheses. And I'm typing it in the exact way that we wrote it down. So 1 plus, and then I have 0 0.0425, I think, yep, divided by n was 1. I'm going to close this parenthesis. I'm going to use my exponent button. And now remember, in Desmos, when you have more than one thing in your exponent, you must use parentheses. So in my parentheses, I'm going to have 1 times 4. And when I do that, I get 1,476.434781. How many decimal places does money have? two. So we have to round to the nearest hundredth because we're talking about this in terms of money. So in terms of dollars and cents. And so I have to round to two decimal places. To round to two decimal places, you look at the third decimal spot. In this case, my third decimal spot is four. If it's five or higher, you round up. If it's less than five, you keep it the same. So my answer is going to be $1,476.43. A equals $1,476.43. This is my answer. So think about what this means for a second. Kelly started out with $1,250. She put it into the bank and didn't touch it for four years. Four years later, she now has $1,476.43. So the money that she gained was all interest. And that is what the bank does when you leave your money with the bank. They say, thank you for leaving your money with us. Here's some free money. And so Kelly got free money by leaving her money in the bank. That is the benefit of having your money at a bank as opposed to leaving your money in a shoebox or in a piggy bank, right? You want to bring it someplace where they're going to give you money for leaving it there. And so that's how her money grew. Let's look at the next example. For the next example, it says Melvin plans to save the $13,000 that he made from selling his car. Must be a really nice car. Um, he put the money into a bank account that has 7.2% interest rate that is compounded quarterly. How much money will Melvin have if he leaves his money in the bank for 10 years? So let's see. He's putting $13,000 into the bank. That's his principal amount. He's going to put it into a bank account that has 7.2% interest. That's our R value. You always want to take that percentage and convert it out of a percent. To do that, we divide by 100 and we get 0 0.072. It's going to be compounded quarterly 
So when we're compounded quarterly, n is 4. And he's going to leave it in the bank for 10 years. So that's our time, T. So let's see what happens. Let's see how much money Melvin's going to have. He had $13,000. 1 plus 0 0.072 divided by 4. And that's raised to the 4 times 10 power. So we're going to go on over to Desmos. We are going to enter this in and we are going to see how much money Melvin has in 10 years. So here I am. What I love about Desmos is that I've already typed this in once so I can click up here and I can just change the numbers. So this changed to 13,000. This is now 7.2. So... And then we're compounding it four times a year. And this is going to be four times 10. Now, if you don't like manipulating your equation like that, that's fine. You could just clear it out or type it in a new line. Again, we are talking about money. So dollars and cents, meaning we have to round to two decimal places. So if I look at my third decimal spot, am I going to round up or keep it the same? keep it the same. So in 10 years, Melvin's $13,000 has more than doubled. He now has $26,000, 500 or $26,537 and 16 cents. Way to go, Melvin. Way to make an investment. Let's see, $26,537 and 16 cents. I think that's what it was. Yeah. Melvin, oops, sorry. Melvin more than doubled his money here, and that is amazing. Again, this is why you want to learn about compound interest so that you can invest your money wisely when you choose to open a bank account and give a bank your business.